Knights at the Round Table, a roundtable discussion on speculative fiction books and film. Hi everybody and welcome to the next episode of Knights at the Round Table. Today we are discussing the book The Hidden Masters of Marandur, have my notes, <laughs> by Jack Campbell. Um, and I would like to start with general impressions. Oh wait, I'm at the table. Sorry, with Marjolaine and with Nathan. And I would like to start with general impressions of the book. Marjolaine, what did you think? I liked it a lot. I think it's a really good sequel to the first book and a really good continuation to the story. Okay. Same here. I love the series. Uh, I enjoyed that book a lot. Uh, I also enjoyed the book. It did have some moments that really irritated me, but that just might be because of my cold black heart. <laughs> <laughs> it is a very fluffy kind of series. Yeah. Uh, okay, okay, good. That's the impression I got. <laughs> and I think a lot of the enjoyment of the book depends on your level of tolerance for... Fluffy. Fluffy, for teenage romance. Yeah. He writes teenage yeah. romance the way teenage romance, the way I remember them to be. Which is both a good thing and a bad thing. Okay, so I would, I'm would i going to posit here that it is a bad thing, and it's the reason why I didn't read romance for the longest time, because there are <laughs> so many things about stuff in here that annoyed the bad Jesus out of me. <laughs> and it might be just because like I'm me, and I'm not a particularly romantic person, really. And so, uh, I don't know, there's just... Like, the constant reassurance that she needed about... I, I have to agree with that a little oh, bit. Oh, Elaine's... This is probably the one thing that irritates me about the character of Marie is, oh. is that. But everything else makes up for it so much that it's kind of like a thing that, for me, it was like, eh, this is part of, like, the, the set of tropes that I am to expect. Yeah, but I hate them. <laughs> the reluctant hero thing, you mean? No, the, no, the, no, no the, we're in like, a life-threatening situation, but I'm going to spend a lot of time on ridiculous jealousies that actually don't mean anything. Uh, yeah. It just... Yeah. Come on. That's... She's super cool in every other way. Why this? It came off as no offense to anybody who really loves anime, but sort of like the the like jealous girlfriend anime trope thing that I keep seeing where, I don't know, <laughs> they could be shooting lasers at you, and then the hero smiles at another girl, and the girl being shot at just suddenly goes ballistic for that reason. And you're just like, what? The f what? What? <laughs> there are other things to be worried about right now. And again, it might be just me, because I've never experienced that weird sort of lover's jealousy, I guess. Mm -hmm. So maybe I just find it annoying because it's so far out of my experience, uh. but... I don't know, I just, it really ticked me off. Like, every time it happened, I'm like, oh, skip. <laughs> it, it, it bothered me a little bit as someone who's almost 40, but I think reading this book as a 17-year-old, I would have, like... That's the other wholeheartedly thing. ...wholeheartedly went, like, that's right! <laughs> that's the other thing. I had to continually remind myself that these characters were actually only just 18 years old. Yeah. Yeah, yeah that's what I mean when I say he writes teenagers... Well, in that respect, it can be annoying when you're an adult or looking back on it, it's like... It was annoying when I was a teenager. That's why I didn't get into these books. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but I mean, you know, not wanting to, like, diminish your experience with these books, absolutely, but, like, most teenagers that I knew as a teenager and that I now know as an adult have these, like, emotions! <laughs> You know, <laughs> <laughs> and I am an automaton. <laughs> yeah, no, I, I th that's what I mean. Like I'm being, I'm, I'm giving the book a lot more slack than like I would, yeah. have, particularly if it was an adult book, because I know that my experience is not the general experience. Mm. But like these small petty jealousies really do just piss me off, <laughs> especially when you're in a life and death situation. Like there are bigger things to be worrying about than Elaine liking some emotionless, beautiful blonde woman that walked past. Like, come on. Come on. You're going to feel better about the next book. Oh, good. <laughs> <laughs> but other than that, yeah, I really did like the book a lot. Oh, one other small grave. I feel like the story was cut halfway in the middle. <laughs> like, the ending was not a complete arc. No. Which, actually, I don't mind so much. It just... It, ticks me off when everybody's like, oh, you need a complete arc in a book to get it published. And I'm like, clearly not. <laughs> no, definitely not. And this is, this book is clearly part of like a bigger series and the story is like the arc of the story is throughout those, like, I think six, six, six books, six books. Oh, um, wow. Okay. Yeah. But they feel like 
I don't know, for me, reading those books, it feels like they just go by like this. It was it was a super fast read. Yeah. Like, I, I was maybe four hours reading. Yeah. Yeah. Which I'm sure everybody at work <laughs> was relieved about. <laughs> <laughs> While at my desk. <laughs> oh. <laughs> and uh, this is just an aside, too. Just a, a weird little quirk. But every time I came across the phrase, the Masters of the University... My brain cut it off. It was just the Masters of the Universe. I'm like, he man, what? <laughs> <laughs> That's all I could think of. Every time, like the Masters of the University, like my brain was like, what itty? No, it's just Masters of the Universe. <laughs> I'm like, oh, okay. <laughs> so yeah, that was the other thing <laughs> that stood out to me. Has nothing to do with the quality of the writing or anything. It's just my weird ass brain. <laughs> So other than the thing that I said I didn't like, was there anything that either of you did not particularly like about the book? Not particularly. There's there's there was the the jealousy thing. Another um, another thing that did it didn't irk me. It was just kind of like it, it made me go like was the whole like oh I love you but I can't like be with you I can't sleep with you right now because we're not married yet. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> this was a little like you know it's very. It's a very clean kind of thing, and and I like I, my romance a little bit huh. grittier, I guess. <laughs> Not necessarily Sexy. gritty, but a little like... bit sluttier. <laughs> yes, I, I mean that, that's from my own experience as a human. <laughs> yes. Oh, see, I didn't think too much about that myself because I mean it is fairly purity culture-ish. It is, yeah. But we're kind of living in that like you're surrounded by it all the time particularly if you run in certain circles thankfully not so much around my friends but yeah no for sure you do run into that a lot and i mean if you're gonna have like this really huge broad appeal with your teenage Mm -hmm. romance you definitely want to like veer on that path yeah Mm -hmm. yeah that's true i didn't even think about that but yeah now that you mentioned i'm like yeah actually well you know like other than that like there's so tiny little things like they're not even things that made me halt in my reading they're just things that made me go like oh teenage romance (laughs) but you know oh clean teenage romance yeah but you know like it fit the characters and it fit the setting and it fit Mm -hmm. the story yeah yeah that's all of it so yeah for me it was i'm not sure how much um, because i think to read this series as a whole so i tend to blur which event happened it depends on which book but I think it, you could start to see it in this book too, the compulsive heteronormativity, mm. which I didn't even it didn't even register oh, yeah. the first time I yeah. read it. But reading back, as I go back to it now and I'm more aware of this sort of thing, it's like mage male must avoid females of any kind and like right like where are all the gay mages? Mm-hmm. Yeah, in the closet. Duh. <laughs> room closet <laughs> under the stairs <laughs> but <Ba-dum-ts. laughs> sorry harry put a reference <laughs> but yeah i know yeah, see it's i think i had that thought and it's part of the things i just filed away in like well this is not that sort of book yeah but it would like even if they were just a couple of background characters it would have been nice yeah right. And uh, shamefully, because again, it's just stuff you're surrounded by all the time. Mm-hmm. I didn't give much thought to it until yeah. you just said it. And you're right. Yeah. It did make for less interesting background, I guess. Yeah, I mean, the world would have been so much richer if it was... If it was a little richer, you know? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> a little bit more diversity. Yeah. Yeah. No, I agree. Mm. Uh, but I did very much like the characters of Elaine and Marie. Mm. I love how literal Elaine was and how confused by uh, everything emotional he was. Yeah. And knowing that something was off but not knowing quite why when Marie got jealous was hilarious to me. Oh, yeah, and the treading carefully and like, okay, well, she, you know, she wants me to mention this, but she doesn't want me to mention this. And I need... What do I do? I don't <laughs> know what to do. I will do nothing. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> 
and this is a sh- social skills thing. <laughs> like, every time that came up, I was like, oh, it's yeah, cute. It was Elaine really cute. is actually genuinely an adorable character. Oh, I know. Yeah. He's, he's definitely my favorite character. And, and yeah. you know, it's saying something because Marie is one heck of a character, too. And she's really well written. Yes. Yeah. Apart from. For a, a teenage girl with, like, going through everything that she's going through, um, you know, and it being written by a man, it's, it's actually pretty impressive. Yeah. I like that Marie knows what she's doing. I like that she's confident in her abilities um, and not always questioning herself the way some heroines tend to. Mm. The the really only thing she ever really questions is, like, Elaine's attachment to her and, like, bish, he's going through hell for you. Would you just zip it? (laughs) (laughs) Oh, God, that's annoying. (laughs) But yeah, I really liked her. I also liked how kind she was and how that kindness was what was infectious. Yes. Like, it wasn't about her appearance. It was about uh, her her regard for her fellows, even, mm. even the commons, mm-hmm. who are supposedly beneath both mages and mechanics. And that's what got Elaine to where he's, he is now. Yeah. And, you know, changes everybody that she meets along the way, too. Mm-hmm. And and this is how like she she is the person from the prophecy. It's not like some she's some big lofty person like saddled with it and brooding in the corridor. Like no, she's just trying to do her best and trying with... to do what's right. Exactly. Yeah, with what she's got. Yeah. 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 Exactly. Oh, well, there is a little <clears throat> bit of brooding too. It's not. It's not like. What it's brooding? definitely not Paul Atreides kind of brooding. <laughs> <laughs> it's not Lestat. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it's really just her struggling with am I doing the right thing yeah. how do I do the right thing oh my god what? why do these things keep happening to me <laughs> Yeah. what happens now and um, I do wish though that they spent a little more time a little less time on the whole jealousy side and a little more time on how utterly betrayed Marie must have felt yeah mm-hmm. Um, I honestly think, again, from my experience, that that would have been the bigger issue for Marie. But it was really not all that touched on, and I wish they'd spent more time exploring That's it. That's true, more because you know what? Book. Even even the the jealousy thing is easily explained away by that whole betrayal thing. Like everything that she knew and held dear in her life has now turned against her, and she has like literally nobody except for this guy who she just met and and can barely read. And, and, you know, like, th- it makes sense that she's afraid that he will lose him, that she, that she will lose whatever, like, yeah. you know? Okay. But they don't... They don't explore it. No. They don't explore yeah. it. And I wish they would. Because honestly, again, this might be down to my own personal experience, but being betrayed by the people you love and trust most in your life, uh, your family, essentially, is what the guild was, uh, would hurt a thousand times more than what they mentioned in the book. It was kind of just mentioned in passing. Oh, everybody I knew betrayed me. I have... I was like, my family literally tried to kill me. I am so betrayed. Like, one sentence. Yeah. And then you just move on. I'm like, that that would not be me. If that was me, I would be... I would be hell-bent on tearing that place down brick <laughs> by brick. Like, it would be... There would be so much righteous anger and so much agony over in it. Over mm. it. Particularly if I was a teenager. Yeah, like I'm. It's easier for me to shrug it off now, but as a teenager, that would have been my whole world, and it would have just all collapsed, and I would have been a wreck. <laughs> uh, but I mean, yeah, that was a that was a thing that slightly bothered me. But I do also recognize that this book is much lighter, generally speaking, a lot fluffier, as you said, than the books I'm typically used to reading. So the books I'm typically used to reading would would have devoted a lot more time to that inner anger. Slash proper brooding. Proper brooding. Mm. Well, not necessarily brooding, because I mean the character could be feeling all those things and still getting on with it. It's yeah. not like they're just sitting in a dark room going, "I hate everyone now. <laughs> all the things that they've done to me. <laughs> this is the oh. end of everything." Yeah. Oh. Still picking on Anne Rice, man. <laughs> <laughs> What's I? I I've only read one Anne Rice, and it was delightfully weird. But I'm not keen to pick Sorry. one up again. I gave up after half of Interview with a Vampire. I've not read Interview with a Vampire. <laughs> Sorry. No, you're fine. 
Yeah. So, oh, yeah. I do have to say I like the style of writing a lot. It's not complex. Um, there You won't find a lot of purple prose. Mm-hmm. Um, and it's simple but effective. And the dialogues are really The dialogue good. is, really is the good. strong point. Yeah. Absolutely the dialogue is the strong point of this particular series. Uh, Jack, Jack Campbell normally does science fiction. Right? He does, yes. yeah. Okay. Military sci-fi. You can see a little bit of the sci-fi creeping in. Yeah. In the <laughs> smile. It gets in the, proper sci-fi We, we in the came next from volume. the stars. Yeah. yeah. Okay. So basically they're what people that crashed into a magical world essentially well, I'm not going to tell you <laughs> Matt, have we have to, to put the third book in out. there I yep. I'll have to read more to find out oh well what how what a hardship oh no <laughs> <laughs> I'm devastated <laughs> <laughs> so yeah you can see that creeping in as soon as that line came up I'm like oh there it is there he is. <laughs> <laughs> I kind of loved when the first time I was reading this series, trying to figure out exactly the genre. And the first I was like, oh, this is kind of steampunk. Wait, there's magic? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> oh, hold on. This is getting sci-fi. Whoa. <laughs> <laughs> I like books that defy genre. Oh, me too. Mm. Boundaries. I mean, I found that a whole company with it. I mean, oh. yes. <laughs> yes. <laughs> yes, you did. That's true. Renaissance Press. Plug. Yeah, because <laughs> it is one of the more more annoying things when you're trying to submit a book and they're like, "What genre is it?" And you're like, "It's like fifteen different kinds of genre." Ah, <laughs> all, of them. all of them. It's all of them. What genre is this? Yes, <laughs> yes, it is genre. <laughs> genre fiction. <laughs> exactly. Yeah. So I enjoyed that little bit of like sci-fi starting to creep in, just coloring it a little mm. bit, and I'm like, no. Yeah, there is a Jack Campbell I know. <laughs> Have you read that? Or, uh, yeah, way back. Oh, okay. Oh, yeah, nice. Yeah, actually, I think it was the style of writing. Where I'm like, this feels really familiar. So I went back in my catalog to see what I have re- read. I read a lot when I was in primary school, and there was a Jack. Oh, high school. Yeah. There was a Jack Campbell in there. This was my first encounter with Jack Campbell, and I've never really been interested in the kind of sci-fi that he writes. And now I am because of this series. Oh yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> Awkward silence. Yeah, oh, I wish you'd listen to the audiobook. I have the audiobook. So I I I bought the um the the first one? Ebook. No, I bought the ebook first. Mm. Um and then I was worried that I wasn't going to have time to actually read it, so I bought the audiobook to listen on the bus to fill in where I was reading. Right. And I really enjoyed it. Um, McLeod Andrews, I think, is the narrator. He is so he's good. A good. Yeah, he's good. Oh my good. god! And he he, is, he doesn't have like the the nasal kind of like this is me doing a woman's voice kind of thing. Like he is really good with accents, with feminine voices, with like every Ooh, piece of accents. Yes. My favorite character has to be General Flynn. Oh, he's yes. so good. Oh, yeah. my god! <laughs> he comes back. Good. Yeah, well, I expect so. He was seen in Elaine's vision of, like, the future. Yeah. Uh, so, mm-hmm. yeah, I really enjoyed General Flynn a lot. He mm. was a great character. He was so human and so well-rounded. And, yeah, yeah. He was really... Yeah, it's very easy for something like... Or for a character like his to be a caricature. Mm-hmm. But he wasn't. Absolutely. Yeah. Absolutely not. If he was a real he felt general... felt a lot like a father figure. Yeah. 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 Like that was... yeah. If he was a real general, I would very happily fight under General Flynn. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And this is the military sci-fi creeping in, too. Like, you can really feel... Like, there's very little interaction with, like, the troops and the soldiers and everything, but you can really feel that, you know, the author has this depth of knowledge of, of what it feels like to fight and... Mm-hmm. and military know. tactics and... But not just tactics, but also like relationships yeah, and, but and I mean, why people yeah, fight. The, all and... the different aspects that he has this knowledge yeah. of that all the yeah. connection, the tactics, all of it is showing in those mm-hmm. aspects of the book, which we don't see much of in this book in particular. That's another thing that comes back. Uh, the ambush and the break of the ambush was quite good. Yeah. yeah. Well written. You can you can see some tactics, like proper tactics being thrown around in there. Mm-hmm. Um, I also really enjoyed that the soldiers were both men and women and you didn't fall into the trap of 
then it's just being a whole bunch of dudes. But yeah. he mentions men and women, and then a couple of the soldiers that stay behind are... There were two women, I think, in one Yeah, one I think day. so, yeah. yeah. Oh, that that made me so sad. Yeah. At the pass, the oh, soldiers geez. who wouldn't last out the night, who couldn't march on anymore. They, yeah. They're like, we're going to die, but we're going to hold up your rear doing it. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Yeah, it was... Yeah. Uh, and the, that the general fought them on that. He's like, no, you're coming back with us. Like, mm. no, we're not going to make it. Just go. And yeah. then he gives them the gun. And then you hear the two shots in succession. And I'm like, no. Oh. Yeah, the gun with two bullets. With two bullets. Yeah, that's it. Small tear. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. But also the, oh shit, they were supposed to wait until they had no hope to fire that last shot. Yeah. yeah. What just shit. happened? Yeah, what right just away. happened? What is going on? Yeah. Yeah, <laughs> yeah it was... I, yeah, General Flynn, loved him. Great character. Happy that he will be returning. Oh, yeah. I think he's yeah. my favorite secondary character that I've encountered thus far. Ever? Yeah. No, not ever. In this- <laughs> oh. <laughs> oh, that's different. <laughs> ever. I've been told. <laughs> I mean, I do really like him. Would happily go to battle under his banner, mm. but... Yeah, not my favorite character, secondary character ever. Just really good one in this book. Mm-hmm. Also, the accent that he was given. Yeah. With a name like Flynn, that was not the accent I was expecting. <laughs> 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 oh, do you well, I think it's it's the older paternalish character voice of. McLeod Andrews. If you listen to enough of mm. him reading enough books, you start to notice certain voices that he gives to certain ca- type of characters. Mm. I mean, well, it fit, and, though. It was yeah, perfect. it does. It's yeah. perfect. Yeah. I it's first encountered I, General Flynn during the narrated parts that I was going through. And mm. yeah. yeah. I really like him as a secondary character. Glad he's returning. <laughs> yeah. Glad his reasons for fighting were not the stupid ones. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Uh, okay. Does anybody else have any issues or fra- favorites with this book? I really like, and I'm blanking on his name, damn it, the male mechanic friend of Marie. Kalu. 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 Yeah. And I like that he's a <clears throat> physicist in the, and it is in the deep. Yes, and he wants to yeah, like quantum explore shit. the stars yeah, yeah, and yeah, everything, and, quantum physics. And, and like all the mechanics are like, no, you can't do that. You're you're you can't study this, and you can't you know do these things. And and I, you're gonna love Ali too, who's his girlfriend. Yeah, the one who came up with like the single shot, basically. Uh, what is it? Um, rocket, rocket launcher. Like rocket launcher, yeah, yes. basically. Yeah. Yeah, she's she's in the Assassins of Altice, and she's. Uh, you know, you can see why I, her and Marie are friends. I already <laughs> like her. Like, I, I've not met her, and I already like her. Um, yeah, Kalu is lovely. Yeah. Um, and I really appreciate the amount of time that's devoted to um, non-romantic kinds of love. Like, platonic yes. love. Mm-hmm. Friendship, to me, is so, so, so important. And often in books like this, particularly where the romance is on the heavier side... It's thrown by the wayside. It's completely mm-hmm. forgotten, mm-hmm. Um, and I'm so 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 glad that. But it's no, not. these these friendships in this book are really important, and in the series as a whole, they're like, they're as important as romantic love, mm-hmm. and this is something that I really appreciate. Yeah, too. I yeah, I was getting the feeling that they were just as important, and yes, mm-hmm. I very much appreciate that because yeah, they fucking are. <laughs> yeah. In yeah. real life, guys, don't abandon your friends. <laughs> Friendship forever. <laughs> <Hey>. <laughs> Friend power. Friendship uh, is magic. Friendship I was is waiting magic. for that. Oh. <laughs> God. <laughs> also, I really like um, the insistence that a culture that does not change atrophies and dies, yeah. which is essentially what's happening in this world, because they are so afraid of losing their grip on power that they're not allowing anything to change. And of course, because they're not allowing anything to change, everything is starting to decay and rot and they're not coming up with ways in which they can fix this rot because they're not allowed to mm. because that would require changing the way things are done. And yeah, I really, 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 really like that. 
touching on the necessity of change when so many books, particularly of the fantasy genre, are backward looking. Yeah. They're like, oh, the golden age when everything was wonderful. And you're like, no. No. <laughs> really wasn't. <laughs> Hashtag make medievalism great again. Oh, God. <laughs> uh, plague for all <laughs> God. 15 children of which two survive mm. 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 quite like my penicillin thank you very much <laughs> yeah so I really liked that part that subplot plot major plot subplot theme theme yeah. <laughs> thank you <laughs> <laughs> And I like the way that it's not just that you see the things breaking, it's that there are certain things that you don't know why the way they are and they just they never worked. Yeah. Like for the the train track that she when she manages to jump the train early in the book, that because it slows down because there's a hill and it has to it has to like Yeah. It instead requires of, more effort to get up the hill. Yeah, and the the way the track is laid, like you they could have laid the track in a different way. And no one knows why the track is that way, that it's super... But now it's there and they can't change it. And yeah. it's no, it's not that they can't, they won't. They, yeah. yeah, they won't. Now it's there and they just won't change it. Yeah. yeah. but And she uses that to her advantage, but it's one of the ways that you see the inefficiencies that are built yeah. in the system that you just don't understand anymore. They might have had a reason yeah. way back when. Yeah, but. exactly. The efficiencies and the redundancies and... Yeah. It was... It's a really lovely... Not really lovely, but it's a nice thing to make a big deal out of because it's so 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 true. Mm -hmm. If you well, don't change, you it's die. good because as a theme, it's not just in like you know the lofty, more ideal things of the book. It's anchored in every little detail of the story. Yeah, yeah, mm -hmm. that's true. All right, we've got uh, about two minutes left. So, final thoughts and star rating, Nathan. Um, I love this series. I love this book. It's going to be a solid four and a half stars for me. Mm -hmm. Same. Four and a half stars? Uh, so a star. I love this book. I love the series. I I can't just stop at that one. I have to just keep moving forward when I'm reading I it. I mean, they so. left it halfway through, so yeah. <laughs> <laughs> uh, so three and a half for me, um, because it is uh, a little lighter than what I normally read, and I do wish they put more focus on like etern internal struggles which I find more fascinating than like external things like there's a pretty girl walking past and oh. now Marie's jealous <laughs> that it really did irk me <laughs> but it otherwise gets better. It yeah. gets better. <laughs> otherwise it was a really really good read and I'm super happy that I jumped in on this one I have to go back and read the first one now <laughs> <laughs> Fortunately, he does a good job of like catching you up to speed in the beginning. Chapters. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah! Like I wasn't lost; I knew exactly what was going on. All right, who would like to pick the next book? Nathan would like to pick the next book. Ooh, the Face in the Marsh by Elizabeth Hurst. Oh Ooh. yay! This is a horror, right? It is yeah. a horror. Oh, okay. So I don't often get to read horrors, mostly because every time I see a horror title, I run screaming in the other direction. <laughs> so this will be good to open my, my, expand my horizons a little bit. So the next book that we will be discussing next month is uh, Face in the Marsh by Elizabeth Hurst. If you have any thoughts about the hidden masters of Marindor. Marindor, I got that right. I kept wanting to say the masters of the universe. <laughs> it's driving me insane. The hidden masters of Marindor, uh, leave them in the comments below. Uh, don't forget to like and subscribe and follow us on Twitch if you would like to see these live. Okay. Bye. <laughs> Bye. <laughs>